Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice, the most requested artist from you, and also the winner of our Patreon polls recently, has been Evanescence. So we're going to be checking out Amy Lee's vocals on this channel for the first time in Bring Me to Life. I'm pretty sure that I heard Evanescence when I was younger on the radio. So I'm guessing it will be familiar, but I've never done an in-depth dive into Amy's vocals, so I'm really excited about that. But also, I got even more excited when doing research on the song to discover that this is a love story. Amy co-wrote it with two other band members, and she was thinking about the guy who would become her future husband. Now, she was with another guy at the time, and when the song was originally re released, people didn't know that. So it's kind of like a secret love story. And Ben Moody, the lead guitarist, said, Bring Me to Life is about discovering something or someone that awakens a feeling inside them that they've never had before. You discover there is a world that is bigger than just your safe bubble. So of course I already love this song, but let's go ahead and see how things are set and check out these vocals in depth. Okay, yes, I totally recognize this. I definitely have heard it before. Um, I really, I love her head voice here. It's got, uh, it's got a little extra strength that like peeks out every now and then. It sounds particularly haunted as well. And I'm really interested in the ambient noises that they're adding to the track. So you had some sirens. I think it started off with some wind blowing, some curtains. I think that's sort of a fantastic effect to add to this. It makes it feel more like just another day in real life, but that I'm guessing is going to have a much deeper message. Let's go back to the beginning and listen for those ambient noises one more time. There's some wind. Oh, there's an electric sound there. And the sirens. Something else. D don't know what that was. How can you see into my eyes like open doors? <laughs> I never realized how amazing the production of this song is. It's all of those extra noises are really fascinating how they bring them into the music. Like right there, they dropped out other musical elements, except for they might have had a really low bassy synth that felt like it almost dropped at one point, which would kind of go with this vision of her sort of falling through the air. Um, very clearly, I, I like it feels like she's in a dream. You get that from the visuals. Um, and of course, from the words to wake me up. So she feels like she's living life within this sort of haze, I suppose. And it sounds unhappy. Um, it sounds almost like a plea for some help, uh, which in reading the backstory about her and uh, Hartzer, I think Josh Hartzer was a guy that she would end up marrying, uh, learning a little bit about that and how he saw right through her and saw that she was actually happy in her current life state. And that she found that she was able to find much more happiness with him later. I, I get that. I think that's just a wonderful uh, feeling, uh, a wonderful depiction of what she was going through by having it sort of be a hazy dream. And then this call to wake her up. Uh, 
Also, I'm really, I was loving this feeling of the ambient sounds. And then there was uh, just a very light piano and a string instrument at one point. And then you have this rock that comes in at the same time. It's a really great combination of sounds, but really well produced because each sound seems to have its own space. You can hear it really clearly and uh, nothing seems to really get in the way of another thing. It's not muddy at all. Let's catch this transition. Again, just renewed appreciation for the production of this piece. I love the way that they're playing essentially with these tiers of sound, like T-I-E-R-S, not like tiers, but different kinds of like sudden tiers, where you have a lot of the sun, the sound will suddenly drop or it'll suddenly come back in. It makes that a uh, very exciting effect, I think. Uh, I was really, oh, these are really creepy faces. Wow, why did you pause on that frame, Elizabeth? Uh, I was really loving also the echo of her voice in this passage. I It feels, it has like a nice weeding to it. It's not just harmony. It feels like echoing voices instead. And we're going to go back and listen to that section one more time because I feel like the writing was very interesting in how she wrote additional voices for herself. Uh, let's see. Let's just go back maybe here-ish. Sometimes you, uh, again, pause on the creepy clown faces. Come on. Uh, so you could hear in there, she sometimes will harmonize with herself, but she'll like do it a little bit later. Sometimes it's right in time. Sometimes it kind of picks up and flows into it. So the harmony has a life of its own. And that's definitely something that I look for in good harmony writing. When you have another vocal line, you don't want it to just be... Uh, a piece of the main line, you actually want it to have a life of its own. So this definitely has a life of its own. And I like the contrast in tone qualities that she gives. Her lower voice um, has a little more breathiness to it. And that's her chest voice there, I think. And then her upper voice right now, she's mostly hanging out in like a much more powerful head voice, which a lot of people will call mixed. Um, but technically, it's using head voice muscles. Um, just with a little bit more power. So musical theater people, for example, would call that a mixed voice. Um, and classical opera people would just call that a head voice. So I think it's really interesting because she has a little more laser in her sound in her mixed, uh, whereas she has more breathiness in the lower sound. And it, she's not looking to blend the sounds. She actually wants them to both have a life of their own. Very cool writing. Ugh. into this bridge section in just a bit. Um, it's so interesting to me listening to the lyrics of this, that she's saying, um, save me from myself. Also, uh, he's, 
he's yelling, wake me up. I, I love that combination, by the way, of his yelling and sometimes singing uh, to go with her vocals. I like this combination of male and female sounds together a lot. Um, it reminds me of, I think, Monster. I think that was Eminem and Rihanna. That was a song I just really, really loved. So I love it when you have uh, both male and female um, almost in like a different sort of setting from each other. His obviously sounds a little more like rap. Um, not totally rap, but it, it sounds more like it because he's just speaking some of these words. So having that contrast, I think, gives the song more layers and it can intrigue you on just tons of different levels. And that's really cool because that makes it relatable to tons of different people. Uh, in addition, I'm thinking about these lyrics and thinking about the fact she's saying, save me from myself. But I know from this research that it was still a few more years before she actually got together with the guy that she wrote it about. So that tells me that she probably had to take some time to settle things on her own and in essence, help save herself. So I think that there, it's got an interesting message. It's like, please help me. Or I see something in you that gives me new life. And I know that I want to get there, but I feel like in her life, the message is that she actually continued to take the first step and keep going forward. Um, so that that happy ending could eventually be found. Uh, maybe that's just my personal take on the lyrics and uh, the impression of how they might have influenced her life later. Let's get into this bridge section. That section was awesome. Um, so I love this, that it's a conversation between two people like this. That was really cool back and forth. And it sounded like uh, like a fry scream at the end. I want to listen to that a lot more closely. His, his consonants have so much inner rhythm to them. They've got a lot of energy and punch to each of them. Mm. It's so interesting it, between hers and his voice. You have, uh, she has a lot more legato line on top of hers. His has like a much more punchy kind of rhythm. So I'd see, if I were looking like at a, a wave file or something, I'd see like a lot more like sudden vertical marks. Whereas hers has like a much more fluid expression on the top. And, uh, and you just hear her line tends to hang out and hover a little more. There's something about it that seems to linger. Whereas his quickly fades away. Ah, oh, cool. Whoa, that don't let me die here. There must be something more. Uh, don't let me die here. It sounds like it's got like two different layers of a whisper and a scream on top of it, or maybe just a, a talk on top of it. But then there must be something more. I think definitely has some sort of vocal, uh, probably like false chord action that's happening in his throat. Listen for that with me again. <laughs> This is one of the things that I really dig about adding any sort of scream to a song. Vocalization, uh, in its essence, is some form of singing, right? Singing is elongated speaking or heightened speaking in many ways. And if you go uh, and you scream, if you just elongate that scream on a pitch, that's also considered singing. So I think it's it feels like it's the next highest level when you can get that 
extra emotion that just bursts out into a metal scream or this kind of fry scream. Ah, it's fantastic. It has a lot of power behind it, even though it's kind of quiet within the mix. This is super curious to me. In the video, it looks like he's trying to pull her up, but she actually looks like she's trying to pull him back. She doesn't look like she wants to be saved at this moment. Maybe I'm reading into this too much, but look at this position. Once she gets her feet up, right there. Like, it's not like she started to come up at one point and it, I mean, he has enough leverage. He should be able to pull her up, but it looks like she doesn't want to be pulled up. So that's interesting. Maybe she is wanting to actually save herself. And he's also saying, save me. Both of them are, are trying to work, but it sounds like, you know, independently, they needed to work on that too. Oh yeah, he can he can do a metal scream there. That's amazing. That's an awesome sound. It's super creepy, super intense, fantastic. And I know this fall is very, very dramatic and scary, but I also just think she looks so pretty while she's falling. She's so elegant at falling. Ah, oh, sorry. I know it's really sad. I'm sorry, Amy. But she really does look pretty while she's falling. Look at this, like, like she looks like she's just flying. That probably takes a little bit of the edge off of it so it doesn't hurt as much inside. Yeah. Hmm. Ooh. interesting to get this ambient noise on the way out again uh, that I really think that this was smart video production to do this more elegant floating away flying kind of fall rather than just a, a straight fall that would have been too triggering I think to um, would have been too much and the video is more effective by placing that within a dream it is so refreshing to be able to go back to a song that was uber famous and get to analyze it with new ears. This was just very eye-opening for me. It made me realize why it was so good back then. And knowing now what I do about vocals and music production, it makes me really excited that just the general public can identify that greatness and they latch onto it and they love it too. The lyrics in this are really powerful. I love that they're vague enough to apply to all kinds of situations. And I love that they're executed by both a guy and a girl with different styles as well. It's very, very effective. I love the combination and, uh, and the contrast of their voices. And I really enjoyed listening to how they brought in ambient sounds and sometimes just solo instruments or that full on rock sound. I, that was, that was eye opening to see, oh, this is how they weaved you in and out of production and that sudden like wall of sound slam. And this is how they took it away, but made it not feel empty by adding ambient noise. And this is how they removed some of the sound that hurt. So her voice was able to soar over all of the sound a little bit more. And it was just really, really well mixed overall. So many kudos to that production team and many kudos to the team that made this video too. Very, very well done. Thank you to everyone who recommended Evanescence. Thank you for letting me go back and check this out. Thank you to the patrons that also recommended it. And I hope that you will all come and join me on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays at 8 a.m. Arizona time for video premieres on YouTube 
or you can also join, join Patreon and help influence videos like this and also get to chat weekly with me in Discord. So uh, I'll hope to see you somewhere else again soon. Thanks.